I obviously try to control it somehow. Anyhow, class time. Sit up straight. Remove your glasses. Balance yourself left to right, front to back. Sit high enough on support that these hips can soften. Join your palms. Make sure this breath that you're breathing is first of all ordinary. And secondly, soft, not forced. Soften these limbs, the arms, the legs. Soft armpits, soft groins. Relax the sense organs, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin. Release them in. Let go the frontal brain, settle it back. Release the middle brain back. Let the <clears throat> Back brain, settle. So the front brain recedes toward the mid brain, mid brain recedes toward the back brain, the top brain, the sides of the brain. Let them cease to expand. Let them settle in. The thought itself recedes away from the front brain. In this way, let the mind settle into the body. In this way, <clears throat> from the attention in the middle of you, pay homage to this practice and to that teacher, Patanjali. Bow your head to your heart and release your hand. Release your head and open your eyes. <clears throat> Let's go straight to work. Miras. Release those thoughts. Our work is right in this hip, all 360 degrees. Okay. So <clears throat> take an extra blanket, whatever you need for ankles or buttock support. Take an extra blanket, not too thick. Bring it in right in to that crease. Make a groove in the center so, <clears throat> 
So the middle space doesn't push on you and you fold forward. Your objective is to support a space in this front hip, not compact or compress the organs, okay? So you come forward and with that roll or it can be thin or thick, it's your pelvis, your hips, you know, some people need to actually make a roll. Some people, small. It's up to you. Go forward. You only really know when you fully fold forward. Do rest ahead if it, it doesn't easily go to the floor. Pay attention, please, to this breath that you're breathing. Hopefully that breath can still penetrate all the way to the hips, to the pelvic floor. The purpose of this blanket is to enhance that, not inhibit it. So if need be, raise the head. Let the pressure of the blanket tell the top thigh muscle to go down. Let that same little roll allow the front hip blade to move forward toward the ribs, toward the head, thighs down and back, pelvis lightly, no pressure, rolling forward. So that forward movement of the pelvis isn't being accomplished by you gripping the front hip. That's the point here. Okay, I hope that makes some sense. Adhukka Svanasana, come up, remove the blanket, tuck your shirt in as needed, and stretch your arms, expand those bones, lengthen them toward the hand, toward the shoulder, shoulder blade goes toward the hand and away from the skull. Up you go. Lengthen. Lengthen the pelvis bones, side hips, front hips, back hips, sacrum. like the toward the buttock bone. Lengthen that, keep that top pelvis steady and lengthen away. <clears throat> okay, come out and please set up for supta Virasana, the version that I want has two options, one for those who need more support, which would be a chair with a brick as head support. Those uh, who work lower, you will need not just a bolster or the equivalent, but you need a blanket support for your knees. So the low version, my point is, my objective is to open this front hip. So I'm keeping knee 
hip, ribs, shoulders, level. If you see this, my head is going to go off the edge a little bit. My neck is supported. That's the loveliness of the ordinary bolster. It's kind of designed to be a spine length. So flat open, okay? Those who can't go so flat because there's too much stiffness, then you start, you can start seated, but you might come up higher. Put your <clears throat> base of the sternum against the edge of the chair and come up and you'll see this opens as we would hope and the arms can stretch through. And you've got a good amount of weight on the chest on the chair. So the legs can stretch. Be level between your tailbone and your head. So don't let those buttocks drop off the bolster. They have to be level which means you must raise the knees, okay? So raise those knees, Marissa. I mean, it, it, because I'd rather the pelvis and lumbars were long than that you had a nice comfy back bend. So bring that bolster in closer. It's got to be under your tailbone. <clears throat> turn your buttocks, turn, turn, turn. That's it. And go back. That's right. The head goes off. Now, give me a thumbs up or, or sit up. <laughs> Are you okay? Good. Stretch your arms over your head. Lengthen that front hip, lengthen that buttock away from the low back. Buttock bones toward the backs of the knees. I want your sensation to be the lengthening of all the thick layers of muscle of that front pelvis, front top thigh, front hip blade has it the reason it is such a robust muscle bone is because there is a lot of robust muscle attached to it. And this is coaxing those muscles of the front thigh and deep hip flexors to lengthen. So I hope my words are sort of coaxing some extension. Please come out, take your arms to your sides, keep the buttocks sitting as you lift your chest up, preserve that spaciousness, whatever you have gained, lift your chest. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> please come out carefully back onto the hands and knees symmetrically, turn your toes under like so, and just do a leg stretch. It can look like dog pose. It can look like Uttanasana. Just stretch your legs. Okay. Now, everybody go to Ardha Uttanasana. So if you're in dog pose, feet forward or hands back but go keep your elbows straight 
come up on bricks if you need to, to fully stretch those legs and lengthen your spine. Now, in order to lengthen the low back, sometimes we do this thing with the shoulder blades. We sort of scrunch the shoulder blades toward the head in an effort to pull out some length in the back <laughs> and further down. So this is a sort of an erroneous view of how this whole business works. Make that shoulder blade long again. Take the lower shoulder blade away from the spine. And this is going to engage muscles that help you lengthen the spine. Push the arm to the floor so that shoulder blade is really helping that arm extend. And at the same time, bring that lower shoulder blade away from the skull. These two actions are how that shoulder helps open the rib cage. Now exhale, bend the elbows, lower the trunk. Take as deep an uttanasana as you can and stick to the rules of this shoulder blade. So where the joint, the, the big joint of the shoulder blade articulates with the arm bone, spread that shoulder blade so it helps the arm extend. The lower tip of the shoulder blade, lower inner shoulder blade is what I'm calling a kind of the joint or it's the other end of the bone, okay? And it's got to move away from that shoulder and away from the skull. And still the elbow and shoulder extend. Now, release. Hands to the hips, legs quite straight. Before you come up, move those arms back. Shoulder blades, once again, working. And inhale, bring your chest up. Now, it's time for, hmm, ah, uh, yes, good. You might need bricks. You might. I, I, I don't think anybody will need a chair, but you might need bricks. Your hands want to be able to comfortably come to the floor, okay? So if this works, good. Then your feet will join. Your hips here are level. Hopefully, you've got that same sense of space, front hip moving toward the head and the thigh staying back. Right leg comes up, fully stretch. I mean, fully stretch. So you make these pelvis bones long, side pelvis, sacrum. Keep the front fold here long. Keep this pelvis level, trunk level. Move your ribs forward, shoulder blades back. If all goes well, hands go further back and this tilts the trunk down. But because of your full extension, you maybe can help that leg lift with you. The more you stretch, the easier it gets to fold forward. Go if you have not started yet. Uttanasana, hips level, Karen Carpenter, hips level, Karen in Paris.
Raise that leg, stretch it so much the trunk extends. Trunk forward, Chaya. Ribs forward, straight arms. Yes, extend. Taking the head down comes from the, you feel the door opening. And you, the leg goes up from extension and the trunk goes down. Lower that foot, rest there for a second, stand up straight. Karen Carpenter, this hip, it's still an issue, correct? No, not to it. It's always an issue, but it doesn't seem to be flaring today. It feels pretty good. Yes, be super careful with this action. Don't be, don't spend long at it. And the prime directive for you, if this is the infected hip and it is the standing leg, you have to keep this thigh bone rolled back. So you feel like between your hip joint and your tailbone, you're squeezing your buttock. You're squeezing this outer thigh toward your tailbone. That is your utter prime directive, no matter how much you lift the other leg. And don't take the full Uttanasana, just stay at the halfway. Go. Everybody, side two. Keep those, you should follow the instructions I just gave. But for most of you, it's easier. Keep that outer thigh muscle of the standing leg strapped toward the tailbone. So it goes back and around. It's like a rolling action. And your thigh stays forward. Facing forward, I mean, not rolling forward. Lengthen the trunk, Chaya, that looks better. Now stretch the left leg. And from the extension in the groin, the leg goes up, trunk goes down. It's a powerful leg stretch. And an open trunk, come out. The moment, Karen Carpenter, you get a clue that that action is reversing, you come out. Okay. Question, Devin? Yeah. So uh, standing leg better, that, that instruction really helps. This strap. Lifting. You know what that yeah. is? That's gluteus maximus. Yeah. I, I can okay. feel the connection between the-, the... And some other things. But that yeah, femur. I can feel that. Yeah, I can feel it more secure. It's not sliding anymore. The lifting yes. leg, after a certain level, if I go up higher, there is a little external rotation. Do I stop and keep it perfectly parallel, or do I let it go? <laughs> That's a hard one to answer. You look at, where is it? Where you have that one? I thought I did. I've got a different one, but um, I will say uh, a <clears throat> minimal turnout is permitted. What is necessary is the extension through the groins, the extension through the bones. When that's gone and you're still trying, that's when wrong actions happen. Okay. So you should feel that full extension that goes through the sacroiliac and that whole Absolutely. side. Absolutely. All parts, the stuff you feel as much and as well as you feel at the beginning should persist. Okay. Thank you. Persist. Headstand time. Shir Shasana or your equivalent. Now, if you are just in a preparation 
or you should not put weight on the head, you can still do these actions. So everybody have a look the way everybody wants to move into either prep or full pose. Make sure those arms and shoulder blades are doing their job. You come up and you get as inverted as you can in your trunk. That means walk in. Don't stay back. Raise the heels. Walk in. Keep your bones expanding. Then everybody takes one leg up. The external rotation tries to happen. You've got to extend, by the way, Karen, both legs to make the top leg work correctly. You can't be lazy with your standing leg. Go do half of you are doing a half are watching, which is good, but you get the point. Yes, Emmy. Uh, I have like a pretty bad congestion in my face. Should I do headstand? No. What you do, is it sinus? I don't know if maybe a cold or allergic. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> you take your Uttanasana and put all 10 fingers like a bowl shape on the floor. Stretch your arms straight, hang your head, hang your spine. What you're doing is lengthening the line from thumb and index finger to this base of the skull. Okay. Okay, which is a doorway into the sign. If your head hurts, raise it up, put it on a chair. But the point is, stretch these threads that go from the base of the ear to the inner palm. If your head has a lot of pressure, give it support. Vertical arms, right? So move your hands back, Emmy. Yes. Even further back, you're not vertical. It's going to raise you. Yes, there you go. Be there. Now, all 10 fingers. Is this because of pressure in the head, Emmy? Oh, more. I mean, like a chair. Or tall bricks. There you go. And you may back away from that chair the spine gets longer, but still open up that line from ears to thumbs. The, the, and you spend minutes there, Emmy. Not, it's not a 30 second pose, it's a three to five minute pose. And as, the, as you really forge that line, the sinuses begin to open. Lengthen your bones. Okay. And you stay there for a bit. Everybody else, you can come out of Shir Shasana. Stretch your legs. Rest your head.
once you are rested, set up a pile according to how tight your hips are. Two large folded blankets, kind of shoulder stand folded. So you're making a big, it's a multi-purpose platform. And it's as high as you need it to be, to be comfortable in seated poses, upright, legs straight. So you build that platform. And it might change depending on uh, the pose. Right, you might need to keep a spare blanket around. So watch, this is a tour of the hip, one side at a time. So I'm gonna show you with no support. So the, well, I'll put that support here, just in case, okay, you can see. First thing, you can sit anywhere you like for this first part. Dan Dasana. One, this is a tour of the hip, one leg at a time. Marichasana, uh, sorry, Ardhamatsim Open up the trunk. Push the foot down, lift the trunk, lean back, open, open, open. Okay, you come up. We're going to take a forward extension as much as possible. We're going to take the wrapping and the full forward bend. Okay, so there will be a few stages here, followed by letting the knee come down. We turn toward that knee. So this is the Janu Shirshasana phase. Okay, turn and extend over this leg. I'm going away from this hip. It should stay down. It should not roll after me. In any case, keep it passive. So if it rises up, that's fine. Then you come up again. Some of you are doing this, some of you are watching. I think it's best if you join me so long as you can see the screen um, because it will save a whole lot of time if you stay with me. So I'm gonna start over for those who are watching. And the angle of view is gonna change so you may need to change your view to keep watching. Dandasana bend the right knee up. You should be sitting high enough that that right heel can push buttocks down and trunk up. Lead away and open this trunk upward, unbound by the leg contact, lift your trunk. Then, Reach that arm up, extend more, push the heel down, come forward. Lift your trunk up. So again, this side that is glued to that thigh is lengthening toward the knee. Now you go forward and begin your effort at wrapping the armpit around the front shin. Spend the time here if this is tight for you because guess what? You still need to create some extension, some open space in that right waist. In this gap between the thigh and the waist, you need movement. It's not crossing over, Karen Carpenter. It's staying right hand inside that right knee, and it wraps from inside out. It's not Murray Chasana. Now clasp if you can. Watch out the clasping gay. Instead of clasping gay, gay, instead of clasping, keep these hands wide 
and just spread this chest. And you take your forward bend, spreading the elbows, keep hold of that back arm against your shin. But do it by spreading. Don't wrap either hand, spread both elbows. Now, go forward, those who have not yet. Catch your foot gay. Both hands, if you can keep that knee in, stretch the spine. Those who are clasping, stay clasped. Take the forward bend. Full forward bend, Karen. Face your foot. We're not a third done this sequence. Come up. Sit up straight. Don't change anything except let your knee relax out to the side. And lengthen that foot. Now, after doing this, you may need to shift your position on your blanket to, and this is why you have a big blanket, because some of you may like that whole thigh supported. Some of you may, I mean, I've been taught with the entire bent leg elevated on the blanket. And for some, it is just totally helpful. Others, the whole thigh, but not the shin. Others sit at the edge of the blanket, so only the pelvis is supported and the thigh hangs down all completely. This platform gives you options. So Karen, my request is that you make sure that the top femur bone, where the irritation is, is supported. Don't let the femur bone like hang off the blanket. Okay, all right. Turn toward that knee. Keep the outer left thigh down. Turn toward the bent knee. Use both hands on the floor. Keep the outer straight leg seated. Lengthen both buttock pelvic muscles, bones, both sides forward. Then you come up, divide the ankle between the thighs as if you're doing Upanishad Konasana going forward, but with one knee bent, keep both outer thighs down. Come up, we're going fast just cause time, cause time. Face that straight leg. Look, if your hips are particularly tight, instead of going one, two, three, you can go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you can make as many stages as you like. Turn and face this leg. Your navel doesn't need to come all the way around, but you want to feel the pelvis rolling, keeping the outer thigh down. Your sternum will face your feet. Stretch both arms up. Reach forward, catch your foot. Lift your trunk up, Urdhva Mukha like. Keep an imaginary blanket in that straight leg front hip so that thigh goes down and the pelvis up. Go forward. Widen those elbows, spread the collarbones in the back. Now come up. We're not done. Go outside that leg and reach the bent leg arm forward, bracing with the straight arm. I'll be on a diagonal maybe so you see this better. The arm crosses over 
and the hand braces outside. I'm trying to get my sternum past this leg, keeping the outer right thigh down. Come up again. Still not done. Watch. I'm going to, again, you can do this by stages on your own, but we're going to go straight off to the side, as close to perpendicular to this leg as you can get, as close to straight away from this knee as you can get. Now my knee comes up, this leg rolls. Do you see it? I'm not keeping it vertical. I'm letting it roll as it will, and I'm stretching. Once your head is down on something, lengthen, you feel the tight line. It's somewhere between your front thigh and your outer thigh, somewhere in between. Is the corner, stretch the corner. Lengthen the corner part of that thigh. Come up, careful. Keep that hip passive. Now, help that leg up. Stretch it forward. Done, does. We're not done with that side. You just facing forward. Now, you're going to. Uh, bend the knee. I just gave you a chance to take a break, but uh, we're going back toward Artha Bhadha Padma. So back from Janu Shirshasana, pick up that ankle. And if possible, if it does not hurt the knee or Karen, the hip, right? You don't want to feel like you're getting a big, deep stretch here. You want to feel quiet. If it's staying cool, I'm happy. If it's getting hot, you go back to, okay? So face this way. Reach, if this pose is available to you, and your shoulders reach around behind. Gay, watch the clasping from the point of view of the heart. That's the idea. So you might take a strap. So you keep the, the back of the shoulder blade reach and broad. That is all. Take the straight leg arm up. Now this foot, if it's in the right place and it's half Padmasana, this foot is acting like that rolled blanket. Press that thigh down with your foot and lift your trunk up. The heel gives your abdomen something to roll over. Bring your trunk up, roll over your foot and forward and come down. If clasping is not happening, of course, two hands, catch the foot. No problem. Come up. Help that leg up and stretch your leg to Dantasana. Still not done. Bend up the right knee. Catch the ankle and fold it to Virasana. Now is when you may need to adjust your support higher. You may do things to protect this knee, protect the low back. Almost everybody has a little crookedity in this pose. The Virasana hip is lifted. Karen, still careful. This is a primary sitting pose. And if the issue comes from sitting, be protective, sit high, sit soft, sit careful. So 
<clears throat> in theory, the knees are together. And at this stage, the game, your midline lines up with the midline between those two legs. When you get into the pose, though, go ahead, stretch those arms up. You've got to be able to sit more firmly on that right buttock so that it gives you extra length from right buttock to right chest. And you can come forward and bring, once again, your sternum and chin over that straight leg. So there is some abiding grounding and length that stays in this virasana buttock groin hip. Hmm. Outer right hip away from those ribs. That right side has to get longer. Come up. Hold your ankle, hold the inner knee, help that leg out. Sit down, shift as needed to the other edge of your blanket and fold. Left knee. Adjust your pose. Take that outer thigh cap foot down. In theory, this midline is your trunk midline. In theory, the hips are level or close enough that you can, it's in your grasp. Sit up straight. Keep this virus in the buttock down. There's activity in the right leg to help is activity in this left inner body and buttock to help. Stretch your arms up. Keep that action going. At first you're lying up in the center, but as you go forward, this outer hip stays anchored and you can almost see it sort of lengthening over this leg. I don't stay here. I'm going to my foot. So you've got to keep that extension. So your nose and sternum come down on that thigh. And you don't have to curl your ribs to get there. Do it from lengthening that lumbar and groin and come up. Now we're done. Stretch both legs. Do you remember all that? Lie flat on the floor. Before you do side two, lie flat. Supta Tadasana. Legs stretched. All that work, it take your arms overhead. Supta Urdva Hastasana. Extend the legs away from the arms. Let go those fibers. Hopefully you're feeling um, a new circulation. Take your arms down, bend your knees, come on up, get ready for side two. So now you know what's up. You know where to situate yourself. First the knee goes up, then the knee goes to the side and you do a whole bunch of things. Then we do art of, Bada Padma, 
we go toward Padmasana and then toward Virasana. So you know where to situate yourself for this first part. Bend up that left knee. Lean away, open up that left side of the trunk. Way open. This is my left side. It might look confusing to you, but it's my left side. Raise the arm, open even more, really open and come forward. At first you catch your foot and the purpose is to open this space. Lengthen this trunk, keep the heel down. Then the elbows bend and you spread across the collarbones, elbows equidistant, so don't be crooked, be as symmetrical as you can. Go forward. And once again, the sternum, happy, happy little blue in the center on the sternum. You can see the sternum comes over the straight leg, which means this side from the hip up has some work to do. So clasp and extend some more on that side. It's not about the twist. It's about the extension and the grounding. And then you come forward with all of that extension. Keep the inner heel down. And you come up. Part two. Now, if you're where, just pointing out, if you're where you should be in this, in this Marichasana one, your heel is lined up with its own hip. So when you come out to the side, there is a strong opening in the hip. I don't know if you see it, but it's almost like there's a brick between my heel and my inner thigh. So there's a lot of space coming in if you're in the right place when you start. So adjust your pose, get that space, remove the brick and stretch your leg, sit up straight. Checking in, Karen Carpenter. Okay. Physically cool. All right, keep the outer straight leg down, turn toward the bent leg. The place that you have to really maintain length is the bent leg side, hip and waist. So be attentive as you come over that leg and don't give yourself an unintended cramp. Don't give yourself an intended one either. No cramps. Extend. It does not bother me if this buttock is drawn up, but the instruction is keep passively hanging, rolling that outer thigh down. So always there's some kind of net gain in the length of the pelvis. And you come up, sit on both hips. Divide this ankle, the one legged Upapishta Konasana. If things are where they should be, you kind of go straight over your heel. Keep that outer thigh relaxed. No knee pain is permitted ever at any time. Any amount of forward. Keep the straight leg straight. Keep both outer hips down. Notice how your pelvis is dragged a bit toward the bent leg side. As much as you can, be symmetrical. It's the same as these prior poses. You've got to work pelvically to even things out right from the root of the pose. And now you come up and you turn more toward classical Janu Shirshasana. For those who have tight hips, 
you may need to bring this in a bit to face properly forward. More open hips. Classical pose has that groin open. You make your decision wisely. Draw the trunk up. That means this front hip has to be able to open. It's not just a nice stretch you get in this leg, but relieve the grip in this leg. Take both arms up. Then you find out about this straight leg hip. Keep the bent leg outer thigh down, outer knee down. Turn those ribs towards your straight leg. Come forward, go up, go forward. Wipe your elbows. Let this pose have its magical effect on the outer bent leg pelvis. Come up. As this bent leg permits, turn past the leg. Brace with the left hand or the outside straight leg hand and stretch with the bent leg hand. So right now, in theory, your sternum has gone past your shin. It's not lined up with it. And it may be that your bent leg buttock is rolling up, but it's not because you're willingly doing it. Okay, we got one more come up, at least in this phase. Go away from this bent knee. Let the straight leg hip roll to some degree. It's kind of following. It's not leaving. Don't turn it. Don't refuse. Just let it be. Make sure that outer pelvis of that left side is long. Make sure the right leg hangs. When your head gets support, you can get more subtle and connected about this length here. And come up. Help that leg out. Now, you can take the break of going to Dandasana or you can go straight through. I take the break just so I can shift my hips on my support. Take Triang Muk Ek. Oops, wait, I forgot a step. Can you believe it? Go back to Janu Shirshasana. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Raise the heel. We're heading toward Ardha Bada Padma Pashimottanasana. So <clears throat> this calf and thigh are rolling even more. Bring the heel up if possible against your abdomen. And that top thigh, that, that top foot down on the top thigh and sit up straight, see how things are. If the wrapping is happening, get that wrap. Use a strap. This is my tight side. You see from my shirt how everything gets twisted. I have to see if I can bring it back. It's not easy on this side. Stretch the arm up, go forward, extend. The foot presses on the top thigh saying, go down. The heel presses on the abdomen saying, roll over me, go forward. Widen both elbows.
if your head were supported, you could roll the ribs more squarely. Come up. Help this leg out at both ends, the thigh, knee end, and the foot ankle end. Now, Dandasana. Now, Triya Mukhekpada Pashimottanasana. This is a long sequence, but you see you've done all those seated poses. Sit level, stretch your arms up. And we haven't wasted time. We've been moving right along. Take your foot, draw that trunk up. In theory, you're sort of between these knees at this point but you have to turn that trunk. You have to interact between this virasana groin and your spine to extend over this straight leg. You can see the line I'm trying to draw here. It's not just a pulling of the rib cage. It has to anchor in that buttock and go forward. Any, any amount, not important. Just keep your sense of direction. And come up. And stretch both legs. Now, that's the end of this. But we're not quite at the end of class. You need to get a strap on your back this time. Stretch both legs out. So we'll start in Supta Tadasana. And just to be clear, so you all see it first, we're going to take the leg up. This should, we're back in forward bend land. Go as far as you like. You might surprise yourself how you do, then the leg goes to the side. Now, <clears throat> Karen, you work with that bolster support again. Raise the right leg, absolutely stretch the leg from the butt bone to the heel. Extend your foot away from the hip. Lengthen that pelvis. Release the abdomen. It should drop toward the floor and lengthen upward toward the chest. Now with the strap in the right hand and the left arm stretched out to the left, take your right leg to the right. Use whatever support you need, Karen, bolster under the irritable hip as needed. That leg should be at minimum perpendicular. Now, those for whom this is plenty of work here to keep the leg straight and perpendicular, you stay and keep extending. Those who can do more, come up, catch the big toe, take that deeper stretch, but do not bend your knee. That is all. So some of you, I would suggest you compromise and just get up closer on the strap. So you do your maximum, but still straight leg, go off to the side, off to the side. Parshva Supta Padang So this is giving that front hip on both sides. It's giving it a chance to kind of undo and open back up and um, get that last aspect of the hip, the front hip to open up again. Leg to the side, Chaya. 
Yes. Elaborate pose. Lots of breath. Lots of space for breath. Please come up. Change sides. Release the leg. Pass through. A moment of two legs straight on the floor. Several breaths, two, three breaths. So you just have a chance to check out this circulation. Okay, side two, whatever support is necessary, attempt symmetry right to left side. Stretch the leg straight and vertical. Absolutely open that hamstring. Gay Gilroy. Move that front thigh back. Open that hamstring. That leg is not straight yet. Keep straightening it. From the butt bone to the heel, lengthen your bones. Now, keep going, Gay. Okay? And extend the foot right through the metatarsals towards your head. Take a deeper pose if you like. Take the deepest stretch that works for you. And now walk up that strap or catch your big toe. Stretch your right leg. It's the right front hip. Got to open. Got to stay open. And over you go. Parshva. Supta Padam Gushtasana. Stretch the right leg, right arm stretching out to the side. Open those muscle fibers. Open the cells of any of those pelvic and abdominal organs that got squeezed and maneuvered around by these forward bends. Even the most flexible among you, those organs got moved, compressed, shifted. So let them all come back to their comfortable home's place and let breath move all around those organs. Now, come up and bend the knee and take those legs down to Sutta Tadasana. For your last act, I think, it would be comfortable. Here is my suggestion for you to put maybe a blanket underneath your shoulders, then get two matching bricks. And those two matching bricks, you've got options. They can lie side by side flat or they can be stacked on the edge. So there's, I want you at a low height. This might be too many bricks if you're a small person or a medium height, one or the other. This is kind of your comfort. I like the idea of this, but you're gonna do a setu bandha that is mild shoulders, neck, head on this little raised platform. And the hips come up. And if you're stiff here, you go by stages. You just leave the knees bent. And this broad support is meant to support the both hip blades as well as the sacrum. That's why it's two bricks. So you have a big platform base. And gradually 
you roll those shoulders under and lengthen the arms away from your skull and then the legs stretch. Now the purpose of this low pose, not high bricks, is to make it possible for you to stretch your legs and lift your chest and add take full open extension that is comfortable. That's That's the main idea. Hip opening, breath opening, relaxing, comfort. Another minute like this. The low end of that support supports the tailbone. The upper end is somewhere on the sacrum. When you're in the pose, your lumbars should not be touching those bricks. They should be making a lovely, comfy arc. So Karen, uh, Laplace, you want those bricks going laterally across the ilium bones, just so you, especially with asymmetrical hips, just at this time, it's not like forever, but at this time, keep that wide support. So your two hip blades know where they are. We are one minute away from the end of class. If you need to come out now, for whatever reason, please do. So this, um, I guess you could call it a tactic of approaching forward bends one leg at a time and sort of really working through the range of motion. And that isn't even all the range of motion, it's some of it. is a way of really untying some of the knots in the hip without, um, you sort of, you just keep working. It's that, as we said earlier, persistence, you just stay with that hip and keep moving and it changes. It is 9.15. It is the end of the class. I'm going to, of course, race away to my next class. So you may be in Shavasana while I'm doing that. Namaskar.